Respected ulama ikram, elders, brothers, mothers and sisters and students, Alhamdulillah, I like to welcome every person here, every individual to our first Dhikr Majlis of the academic year. We started our academic year three weeks ago. Alhamdulillah, this is our first Dhikr Majlis. And Alhamdulillah, it is a great blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has enabled us to gather because obviously we know after the lockdown, we missed a lot of Dhikr Majlis and people have been craving for these opportunities of getting together. What's the purpose of the Dhikr Majlis? We need to keep that in mind. We have students, mashallah, online, uh, listening as well from around the world. Alhamdulillah, there's over 150 students who are online students. And we have all brothers and sisters listening on live YouTube as well. And then we have all the brothers and sisters listening here as well. So the purpose here, like uh, the verse I recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us throughout the Quran how to be close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to attach ourselves and bond ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator. So I just want you to focus on this verse that I recited. And I want you to learn this verse, memorize this verse, and then understand the points I'm going to deduce from this. So I want your full attention and proper focus towards this verse. So the verse I read, Ya amanu wa kunu It's a verse of the 11 Jews. It's the surah of Surah Al-Bara'a, Surah Al-Tawbah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you who believe. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places, He addresses you and me by saying, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu. And that's a way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expressing His love and affection for us. That or the ones who have Iman on me. In other words, he's already telling us that we have that strong bond. I am the creator. You are my creation. You are the ones who have accepted me as the Lord. <inaudible> Indeed, those who have said, Allah, our Lord is Allah, then they stayed steadfast. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, O oh believers, each and every one of us. So this is... Every time Allah says this, He is talking to those people who are faithful. Like a father will say to the son, Oh my beloved son, by saying the word son, He is expressing that whatever I'm going to tell you now, you're going to listen because we got that biological link. This link of you coming from the union of mother and father, you have come into this world, the so basically that link is there, that bond is there, that relationship is there, that love and affection is there. So this is the point what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that that Iman link, and this is the most strongest link that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is putting forward. So what I'm telling you, ittaqullah, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the word taqwa, many times we interpret as the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we say fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what does that fear mean? Whenever we say like throughout the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, fear Allah, fear Allah, fear Allah, all people fear Allah, all believers fear Allah. And in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the opening verses, That this Quran is a guidance for those who have taqwa. The word taqwa comes straight away. So the point here is the word taqwa comes from the root letters wiqaya, waqa. Wow, kafiya. Those who understand Arabic language, wow, kafiya, huruf asli. Fa kalima, ain kalima, lam kalima. So, wiqaya refers to a barrier, a veil, a screen, a partition. So, when we say, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is this telling us? Literally, make a barrier between what? Between our sins and ourselves. So, wiqaya is telling us that whenever you want to commit haram, so let the fear Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become a barrier. Okay. So when we say fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in essence, we are saying we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we want to make this as a barrier from the sins. So a person, he makes a barrier, a partition from committing haram. So we know all the sins which are completely haram, kabira guna, big sins, major sins. So a person, when he says fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that a person, he has made a barrier between himself and the major sins. Okay, so that's the first. 
So a person stays away from haram. Secondly, a person stays away from makru tahrimi. So there's two types of sins. One is completely clearly haram. Qat'iyyu dalala. It's clear signs, clear evidence that this is haram. So when we say fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has so much fear, it becomes a barrier. It becomes a partition. It becomes a seal for him that no, I'm not going to commit this haram. Backbiting is haram. Slander is haram. Adultery is haram. All these different kind of sins, they're haram, so I'm going to make sure that I stay from them. So it becomes a barrier. Fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second barrier is that he stays away from those things which are makru taharimi. Those things which will lead him to haram. The scholars have mentioned, for example, a person urinates standing up. A male stands up and urinates. That's makru taharimi. And this is a problem that we have many of our youngsters. They stand and urinate. That's a completely wrong thing. It's a sinful thing. So... This is makru tahrimi. So by a person having the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is telling us, make sure that the fear of Allah becomes a barrier, a partition between you and makru tahrimi and you and haram. Okay, are you understanding? So what two things, haram and makru tahrimi. Then thirdly, it becomes a barrier from omitting those things which are for us. So the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes us to that level that whenever we want to miss a faraz, we say, no, no, Allah Akbar. The fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should overcome us and we should be able to go and perform our faraz. It should not stop us from <coughs> reading our faraz, performing our faraz namaz. We should not be omitting our faraz act. That's what it's telling us. So this taqwa becomes a barrier from omitting those things which are faraz, like fajr salah. So at the time of fajr salah, if we, are, if we become so weak, that the Mu'azzin is telling us, Hayya ala salah, hayya ala falah, as salatu khayrun minan naw, and we're still sleeping, then we haven't got that level of taqwa. We haven't got that level of taqwa. So what we need to make sure is, that our level of taqwa becomes so high, that when the time of Fajr comes, Zuhar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, any Faraz act, we immediately respond to that. The fear of Allah should be such, oh no, if I do miss my Fajr salah, if I miss my Zuhar salah, what am I going to do? To? How am I going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How am I going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? On that day when we're going to all stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So a person has that fear, has that worry, that how am I going to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So this is a very important point that it stops a person from omitting those things which are for us. Okay? So we said haram, makru tahrimi, and for us. Next one, it becomes a barrier from omitting those things which are wajib. What are wajib? For example, Witr Salah is wajib. Eid Salah is wajib. Sadaqah Fitr is wajib. Those things which are wajib, in other words, compulsory, they're a bit lower than the faras, but it stops us. So we should not be going to sleep without reading our Witr Namaz. So that fear of Allah, no. How could I go to sleep? I haven't read my Witr. How can I go to sleep? So the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be of that level that stops a person from omitting Witr. Or omitting sadaqah fitr because these are wajib. And lastly, it stops a person from omitting those acts which are sunnah muakkada. So sunnah muakkada on a daily basis, we have 12 rakat sunnah muakkada, two rakats of fajr, sunnah muakkada, four rakat sunnah of zuhr, sunnah muakkada, then two rakat after the faraz, two rakat sunnah muakkada, then we have in maghrib two rakats after the faraz, and two rakats after the isha faraz. So all together on a daily basis, we have 12 rakat sunnah muakkada. Okay, so in a nutshell, my brother, my sister, what is taqwa? Taqwa is that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it stops a person from committing haram, from committing makru tahrimi, from omitting faraz, from omitting wajib, from omitting sunnah muakkada. Very easy way to remember. What did I say? Number one, it stops a person from committing haram, from committing and the next three are omitting, leaving out, forsaking, abandoning. Omitting for us, omitting wajib, omitting sunnah makkah. If the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us to that level, alhamdulillah, we will be classified as a muttaqi. Okay? So this is taqwa. If we can take that on board, alhamdulillah, we are successful. And this is the purpose of the dhikr majlis, that we learn something when we take it. So this takeaway package, every one of us, 
whether you come from Oldham or Manchester or Birmingham or Haslingdon, whichever town or city you have come from, Leeds, Batley, Dewsbury, Keithley, mashallah, we have brothers and sisters coming from all different towns and cities around the UK. So we need to, this is the takeaway lesson today. That, that taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching us, have I got that level? And once we got that level, alhamdulillah, that's sufficient. That much is enough. There's no need to have more than that because if you have, there's moderation in Islam. وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُ أُمَّةً وَسْوَطًا This ummah has been made a mu'tadil, a moderate ummah. If you have more than that, then that's a problem. That's why in the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what do you say? اللَّهُمَّ اقْسِمْ لَنَا مِنْ خَشْيَتِكَ مَا تَحُولُ بِهِ بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَ مَعَاسِيك So we are saying Allah give us that amount of fear, not too much. But if you have too much, it will be a problem as well. But if you have too much fear of Allah, then you will not be able to eat, drink, sleep, and do anything normal because you'll be always shivering. What is Allah going to do? I'm going to get punished. This is going to happen. You know, if I eat, what's going to happen? So this is too much. So as long as we do these five things, the checklist is here. Have I read my five time faras? Have I read my witir? Have I read my sunnah makkada? Have I stayed from haram? Did I stay away from makruh tahrimi? MashaAllah, that's it. Dude. So easy. So straightforward. So Allah give us, distribute, apportion us from your fear, min, min is tabi'id here, from your fear, such that amount, that amount, ma tahulu bihi bayna, which becomes a barrier between us and our sins. That's amount of fear Allah put in our heart, that's sufficient. We don't want more than that. Look at the beauty. Okay. So if we can have that, alhamdulillah, ittaqullah, that's the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that's it. So whenever this word taqwa comes, remember this point and see for yourself, Alhamdulillah, have we achieved this? When it comes in the morning at six o'clock to wake up for Vajr, are we waking up or not? Then obviously if you're not waking up, then we got a big problem. So the thing is here, there's three things. Ya ladina amanu, iman. Believe, iman. Number two, taqwa. And number three is saying, wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. Stay in the company of those people who are trustworthy, truthful people, good people. Okay, so stay in the company because why? If we want to retain our taqwa, if we want to make sure our taqwa stays strong, then you have to make sure that you stay in the company of trustworthy people, truthful people, good people. So they all have a very strong link, bond with each other. How long should you stay? Like mashallah, today you have come, you are sitting down with the scholars, you are sitting down with the ulamas, you are sitting down with pious people, students of deen, and you are coming and in the zikr majlis where Allah's mercy is descending. So how long should you be staying? So many times you think that this one day is not enough in a month. So we need to go to the masjid, we need to stay with those people who are musalli, we need to stay in the company of those ulama, the imam, the shuyukh, the mashayikh, the pious people, those people who read salah. I, all the time they are puncturing the salah, they stay away from sins. We need to stay in their company. Al Jalisu Salihu Khairu Min Al Wahda. A good companion is better than staying in solitude. But Al Wahda Tu Khairu Min Jalisu Su. Staying in solitude is better than bad company. So, how long should you stay? Allama Alusi Rahmatullah Ali in his tafsir kitab he mentions that how long should you be staying? Khali Tuhum Hatta Takunu Mithlahum. Stay in the company until you become like them. Until you become like them. So we need to ask ourselves. We just stay for 5-10 minutes and that's it. That's not enough. If you stay in the company. Arif Billah Hazrat Hakim Akhtar Sahib Rahmatullahi Alayhi mentions the beauty. And he gives a beautiful example. These people have so much deep insight. So he gives a beautiful example. That listen to this. Attend. If you don't understand. like If, you, if you're not going to listen attend. You're not going to understand. So that's why it's very important that we listen attentively. He says that. Those who have the threshold of zakat. So like a person, he has seven and a half tola of gold or 52 and a half tola of silver. So if it passes by one year, then you give zakat on that. So you have 5,000 pounds. You got one year passed by this. So you give zakat on that, two and a half percent. If it's a thousand pounds, you give 25 pounds. If it's 5,000 pounds, you give 125 pounds. Okay. So you got 5,000 pounds from Ramadan till Ramadan. So before Ramadan, so Ramadan is started, you have 5,000 pounds. So it continued. And before Ramadan in Shaban, one month before, you got extra 1,000 pounds. So now how much have you got? How much? 6,000 pounds. So that 1,000 pounds, so when do you give zakat for that 1,000 pounds? After one year, do you give it straight away when Ramadan comes? You join that 1,000 pound with the initial 5,000. Okay, and that gets ripe as well. That also falls in that one year. 
So in other words, that 11 months, that money, because of that 1,000 pounds staying in the company of that 5,000 pounds, that also become matured as well. So he gives zakat on that as well. So he gives an example of that by way of example. He says, in the same way, <coughs> you, this person, mashallah, he did so much effort. The pious person, the Sufi, the scholar, mashallah, he put so much effort in. But if you stay in the company of, of that person for even a small amount of time, inshallah, like that money that gets the with the threshold and with the actual amount, that also gets included. You have to give zakat on that. In the same way, the person will also be benefiting from that person, even though it's a small amount. Look at the way our scholars have deduced Masail. So the, po pro the point here is we need to stay in the company of the pious people. If you don't stay in the company of the pious people, then that will affect our taqwa. So it's got domino effect. Listen to this. Iman, if we want our Iman to be strong, we need to have taqwa. If we want to have taqwa strong, we need to stay in the company of the pious people. If we don't stay in the... So then if you do the other way, reverse. If you don't stay in the company of the pious people, our taqwa will be affected. If taqwa is affected, our iman will be affected. And when iman is affected, then what happens is, the person goes into the ditch of kufr. That's why Shah Abdul Aziz, what did he say? Man tahawana bin nawafil tahawana bin sunan. The person who is lazy in carrying out optional things, that will have an effect on his sunnats. A person, he thinks, oh, it's just a mustahab, it's just a, an optional act. It's going to have effect on his sunnah. Wa man tahawana bin sunan tahawana Bil faraid. And a person who is lazy in carrying out the sunnah, it will affect his faraz. And a person who is lazy in carrying out the faraiz, it will have an effect on his ma'rifat. The recognition of Allah will be taken away. And a person from whom the ma'rifat, the recognition of Allah is taken away, he'll fall in the ditch of kufr. So look at the connection. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of compassion and mercy and love is saying, oh my believers, why do I want you to have taqwa? Because I want your iman to be intact. Because if your taqwa is not intact, then that's going to have effect, negative effect on your iman. So how do we, we need to make all these three things strong. Iman, taqwa and kunu ma'as sadiqin. Sohbate ahlullah. Okay, all these three. When Suhbata Ahlullah, if that has any kind of deficiency, it will have deficiency in taqwa. If there's deficiency in taqwa, then it will have deficiency in the iman. And when iman deficiency, then we go in a big problem. We go to a big problem. We fall in the ditch of kufr. So that's why it's very, very important. That's why we can understand how important it is to be in the company of the pious people, in the company of the dhikr majlis, in the company of those people who are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who are punctual in the salah. So, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullaha wa kunu ma'as sadiqeen. That, O oh believers, ittaqullah fi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I'm saying this for your own benefit. That I want the happiness for you. I want the mercy upon you because the iman will be strong if you have taqwa. And taqwa will be strong if you stay in the company of pious people. If, ta if the company of the pious people doesn't take place, your taqwa will have uh, problems and if your taqwa has problems the iman will have problems that's why subhanallah when i was in uh, bangladesh in chittagong one of the great scholars he just passed away last year allama ahmad shafi sab uh, rahmatullahi alay amazing when we were uh, bidding farewell i requested him to give some advice so he gave us three advice and he said the three advice is number one sohbat ahlullah first thing he said stay in the company of the pious people Sohbate Ahlullah. Even when we want to go to Jannah, look at the beauty. In Surah Al Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'in. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'in. Irji'i ila rabbika raudiyatan marudiyya. Or the nafsul mutma'in, the content nafs, because there's three levels of nafs. Nafsi ammara, nafsi lawama, nafsi mutma'inna. When a person is about to enter Jannah, his nafs will be mutma'inna. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, return back to Allah. Allah is happy, you are happy. But if you want to enter Jannah, you're not going to go alone. You have to go through with my pious servants. Fadhuli fi ibadi wa jannati. Enter with my righteous servants, then enter Jannah. Allah could have said, enter Jannah. Allah is saying, mashallah, you have to go through with my pious people. Do you understand? That's why Hassan Abbasid rahmatullahi alayhi says that make a lot of pious people your friends. Because on the day of judgment, you'll need them for your help. Al akhillahu yawma idhin ba'aduhum li ba'udin aduun illa al muttaqeen. Al Akhilla, Khalil, plural is Akhilla. Khalil means those people who are very close friend, intimate friend, bosom friend, close. 
يعني they will be على خلاف يوم إذن بعضهم لبعض عدو they will be on that day enemies except for those people who have taqwa look at the thing that even on the day of judgment even the rest next life the people who are pious those people who you hang around who are good mashallah they will be able to help you so make a lot of people your friends make them make sure that they are pious that's why to this extent the hadith says لا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي let not your food be eaten إلا تقي so لا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي let your food be eaten by those people who are pious because they will be doing dua for you so they will be saying after عندكم الصائمون وأكل طعامكم الأبرار وصلى الله عليه وسلم the person who doesn't know even how to perform his salah what dua is he going to do for you you at least say Allahumma atimana atamana wasqiman saqana. So this is the point here is taqwa is of vital importance. So I was talking about the advice Allah Ahmad Shafi sa rahmatullahi gave. The first one was suhbat ahlullah. Number two, kathrat dhikrullah. The abundance amount of dhikr. That all the time remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In all the other worship there's limited things. That you fast for 30 days, you read five time prayers. But dhikrullah there's no limit. Allah, whenever you mention about dhikrullah, wadhkurullah kathira la'allakum tuflihun. Do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in abundance. So kathrat dhikrullah. We can do dhikr all the time. Zikr lisani, zikr qalbi, verbal zikr. If you can't do the verbal zikr, then in the bathroom even then, a person can do the zikr in the heart. So a person continuously do the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because what is going to happen, a person who will go into Jannah, the regret that he will have, is those moments where he didn't do the dhikr. لَيْسَ يَتَحَسَّرُ أَحْلُ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا عَلَى سَاعَةٍ مَرَّتْ بِهِمْ لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِيهِ That the people of Jannah, they will have no regret because you'll get everything you want there. But those moments that we spend without the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person is going to have the regret for that. So that's why it's very, very important that we utilize, uh, utilize our time in the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third thing he said, تَفَكُّرْ فِي خَلْقِ اللَّهِ Ponder, contemplate over the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is inviting us. Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ard. Waqtila fi layli wal nahar. La ayatil li ulil albab. Indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth. The alternation of the night and the day. There are signs for those people who are intelligent. Those who have lub. Lub, the plural albab which means magaz. Those who got true brains. So they will look into these kind of things. No. There must be, by looking at all those kind of things, there must be a creator. Sanurihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusim hatta yatabayyan lahum annahu al-haq. Allah says, we will show you our signs within yourself, within the horizon, within the world. And you will come to the conclusion that there is a God, there is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creator. And what Allah's Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said is the truth. So my brother, my sister, we need to get this thing in our mind that what is the purpose of our life? What is the purpose of this dhikr majlis? Is to remind us <coughs> that why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create us for? We can't just be wasting our time. So this tafakkur fi khalqi illa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, look at the creation, so many places. Afala yangdhuruna ilal ibili kayfa khuliqat, wa ila samai kayfa rufi'at, wa ila al jibali kayfa nusibat, wa ila al ardi kayfa sutihat. Don't you see the camel? Don't you see the, uh, uh, the skies, the earth, the mountains? Don't you see those things, big creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you think they just been uh, uh, in existence just like this, like the Big Bang? No, no, there must be a purpose behind it. There must be a creative behind it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, do tafakkur fi khalqillah. So when you do that, then you will come to the conclusion that there is a creator. So the point I was saying here is, my brother, my sister, is when we come to the dhikr majlis, we need to understand the purpose. Come with the right intention. And we are coming here, we need to better ourselves. So today the takeaway lesson is, that what is taqwa? And we need to put that in mind. Am I doing that on a daily basis? Have a checklist on a daily basis. Acha, have I read my five time prayers? If I haven't, then I have failed on the first thing of my taqwa list. Then after, if you don't, alhamdulillah. Then let me see if I have I read my witir, wajib. Number two, have I read all my sunnah muakkada? All 12 rakats. Then have I stayed from haram? Have I stayed from makruh tahrim? If you have every day ticked, mashallah, this is the way we're going to increase in our good deeds. This is the way we're going to be conscious of our surroundings, of the purpose of life, of the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent us. Then we will come to the conclusion that Has mankind been created futile? No, no, there's a purpose behind it. So this is the point that we need to take on board and this is the way we need to move forward on a, each day. 
each and every day this is the way we need to move forward allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a true understanding